with Doc Rock. I am Doc Rock, and we are in the recovery room. All right, good to have you here. And you know what? I really need recovery because I've been in this show just for weeks. Couldn't wait for this moment to bring to you the Tom Fritchin Band. How are you guys? Live in the studio. The Tom Fritchin Band, you know what? Incredible. It's good to have you guys here. Hey, I've got to ask. We just heard a couple of really cool tunes here. What did we just hear? Do you make me feel all right and yeah. what you want? What you want. Two are kind of interrelated, aren't they? Yeah, yeah okay. Strategically yeah, picked yeah. out. Yeah, smart stuff. That's great. And of course, we've got we've got only we've only got part of the band in here. The rest of them are yeah. still on the bus, you know, out there. They were, still just, they were just they were just there. Yeah, <laughs> are they? Yeah, they were well, they just too hung over to get on the bus. So, but who do we have here? Of course, yeah, the legendary Tom Fritch in the front. Uh, no, that. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we we skipped the name tags for tonight. Excuse me, it's Tom Fritch, and sir, you are Johnny Vincent. Johnny Vincenzo, all right. You know, I recognize you from somewhere. Oh, yeah. There was a band, a Northern Ohio band, that used to rock ass out of here called the Velvamatics. That's correct. Were you the guy? Yeah, I'm the guy. <sighs> Tom Fritchin draws only the best talents into his band. <laughs> Woo! How he recruits it in the back seat. How have we got here? Russell Bombay. Russell. Okay, cool. And you play what instrument? Uh, bass. Bass. I'm in the Velvet as well. Oh, you really? Oh, that's right. Oh my God. Well, Johnny was always hogging the stage because of his right, tall height. Right. Right. Of course, of course. I know that is. And of course, Jeffrey Mash. Jeffrey Mash on the. Drum. Absolutely. I got to be. My gosh. So there is some there are some musicians missing because this is a big band. Yeah, big. Okay. Oh, yeah, Who's yeah. missing? Uh, the fiddler. Raj. Hi, Raj. Raj is a fiddle player and he's missing. Right. Okay. He's missing. Oh, Raj. Come on. My brother Joe plays the other guitar. Okay. So Joe Fritchin plays guitar. He's not here. All right. And then we have the girl background singers. Okay. And we have... And who are the girl background singers? Can't remember. Joy, Joy Rambo. Rambo. Joy Rambo. Uh, Joy Rambo. Joy. All right. And then Laura. Okay, and Laura. Shauna. Laura and Shauna. Wow, yeah. that is great. My <laughs> gosh, when you guys go on tour, it's got to be a total entourage. Phenomenal <laughs> stuff. Well, you have just released this great CD. W wonderful. One of my favorites. The Tom, Tom Fritchin. And, of course, it's been so long. If we can just uh, show this to you. This is really cool packaging. I like the front. Okay. And I like the back. Done really well. Speaks well, well, but you know what's so cool about this? <laughs> You're doing the thing that I gripe about all the time. You're getting your image out there. You know, a lot of bands do these art CCD covers and everything, and, and and their image is never even on there. You know, thank you for doing this, okay? And yes, ladies, he's hotter in person than on the CD. So uh, if you buy the CD, he'll, he'll send you a personal picture. So congratulations <laughs> on this thing. <clears throat> it is absolutely great. By the way, Raj, the fiddler player, you know, he just, he's frustrated because he couldn't be here. And I was a really busy guy, quality, quality guy. Um, he said, you know, hey, Doc, he said, this is Raj. He says, he's Tom's favorite fiddle player, by the way. He just wanted to say hi and wish he could be in the studio tonight, but he's still working at the office late. Raj, what is it? Come on, man. It's crazy, but it's good to, um, he's uh, looking forward to getting back on stage with you. Loves playing live with you. So He's, he's I, a heck of a player. I, he's, Raj is great. Yeah. I can imagine with all the energy you guys put out there, so it's it's, it's incredible. This, and also this other guy you just emailed in, and I really appreciate this, and I appreciate your emails. The chat room is open for all those Tom Fritchin fans, and you know this one says, hey, Doc, I just heard Tom Fritchin is on. Whoa, we saw him play a few times, and I really like the music. You know, I hope he does well and continues to grow. He's deserving of it. You know, and it said, uh, I think he even has a fiddle player that we really enjoyed, oh. uh, not to mention the band's great looks, too. This is a hot-looking band. It's from one of your fans named Dave. So, Dave, just, uh, <laughs> nice. hey, I just read them. That's it, you know. Sure it wasn't my mom. There are fans out there anywhere. No, no, she is, mom. She, she's probably not in the chat room, but she'll talk to you later. Anyway. Anyway, but uh, uh, the uh, it's it's great stuff. First of all, you know I've got to ask though I've got to get some musical background from you guys, because you guys have really played in some great bands and are very you know very well seasoned. Tom, you know how did you start out in music? Uh, my uncle. Your uncle. Yeah. He okay. Started me listening, I'm going to my grandma's house and you'd hear him playing the Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath, and you thought, wow, he's great, but he really couldn't play. But as a kid, you think it's incredible. Okay. So that's why I started back in. Now he was a guitarist. Yeah. Or what? Okay. Guitar okay. Guitar player. Okay. In fourth grade. Okay. That's why I started. So, so you inspired by him? Yeah, but that wasn't that was rock. Yeah. That wasn't that you know. So you started with more of a rock background yeah, and sort of liking rock. that and everything. So that's cool. Uh, any you know any personal influences today? You know, I mean, if we if we uh, dip into your uh, MP3 player, what are we gonna find? Uh, mostly country. Okay. Good. I like Jason Aldean and uh, 
Dirks Bentley, ah. all the new country. And uh, I, mean, I like the old country too, but Johnny's Mr. Rockabilly, he, he keeps us there. Oh, there's a balance. So, yeah, I, I like more the old school rock and more the newer country stuff. Okay, now you're using the term new country. I'd like to hear your definition, Tom Fritchin, of what is new country. Johnny, help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny, you're on the payroll tonight too. Yeah. So, you know. No, it seems like more that someone in the country coming out now has more of the roots that are from the rock. Okay. You know, it's a little bit heavier and more rock sounding. Okay. So it's really more of the musical thing. It's still yeah. not, it's not, you know, yeah. in the theme I of I think country is so big right now. I mean, you could, there's oh, so many different huge. genres of it. I mean, you know, you have the old school stuff with George Strait and all that. And then you have the new stuff like Gary Allen. Mm-hmm. It's just so big. Sure. There's something for everyone to like. I'm sure. How did it inspire you, though, Tom? Uh, you know, when you, you grew up on, you know, on all kinds of rock, classic rock, all of that. So then, how you know how did you get into country? Being a songwriter, you start relating more to the words, and you know as you as you're maturing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the the words mean more, and you're writing songs mm. that are storylines. You know, you can't wait for the verse to come up. You can't wait for the chorus, and at the end of the song, you want to see where it's taking you. Okay. By the way, have you matured? I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell <laughs> anybody. <laughs> <laughs> depends who you ask. Okay. <laughs> the um, you know, but you're you're constantly writing now. You're like in yeah. these writing binges and stuff. As a writer, are you one of those writers who's you know who's really disciplined? You've got those you know windows of time that you're going to sit down and write. Or, or Tom, are you purely impulsive? Impulsive. I got a got a guitar in the family room, guitar in the living room, guitar in the kitchen, okay. guitar in the bedroom, guitar in the shower, bathroom. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so. I got the little recorder. Mm-hmm. You come up with an idea, you just press record and put the, put the idea down and come back later and work on it. Okay. Like that one song you just heard, What You Want, Jeff's, Jeff back here. So he always has ideas. You know, absolutely. Brilliant yeah, ideas. Idea. Jeff, 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 Jeff is the idea man. My, my, light, my light is on. Drums are always the driver. Is so. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff was driving his truck. He came up with ideas. We need a heavier song. We need something that, you know, something that's rocking. Mm-hmm. So 10 minutes later, I called Jeff and said, here's our riff. And he's like, you wrote that? And I said, yeah. So by the end of the day, the song was done. Okay. So Jeff, see, an idea, man. So you bring, so you bring in Johnny, and you bring in a little bit of Russell, and then that's like the heavy artillery. Yeah. I mean, that's so that really puts the punch right behind. He makes, yeah, he makes me cry. Oh, yes. Tear to my And you know, now you're adding, you know, background singers. Do they really, do they really add much to the live show? You know, do you bring them yeah, up there for the live show? Well, okay, fine. You know, <laughs> guy, right? Oh yeah. No, but, no, they, they have great voices. Yeah. Do they really? They're really yeah. good. And, and they all do different harmony parts, so it really sounds good. Okay, now are you getting them into some choreography a little bit or something, you know? A couple of really slick moves? Or, yeah, I mean, it would upstage you, yeah, but no, still, no, you yeah. know. We like to keep them in the back. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> you no, just, you just yeah. lost your singer. So, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to be waiting outside for us. Yeah. yeah, boy, let's call the cops. Okay, well, yeah. listen, the... Um, uh, when you're arranging these songs, you know, there's such a strong guitar orientation in Tom Fritch and music. How do you arrange parts for three guitars? Between Johnny and yourself, and, and then you throw your brother into the mix, you've got three guitars. Do you guys sit down and divide this out, or, you know, and do harmonies and all? I'm pretty mean, so I tell him what to do. Well, it's, oh, a, pretty, no, no, no. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a pretty unique situation, because Tom, Tom comes up with the main bass of the song, mm-hmm. and then he lets everybody else pull their own energy and do okay. their own thing into the songs. Okay. And, and it's and that's the good thing about being in this band. Everybody we're able to put our own parts on what we feel and everybody everything's up for discussion, but sure. usually I mean everything it always blends together. It, right? Doesn't it feel good when you're in that studio and it just seems to come together? It's unstoppable. Yeah. It's unstoppable, you know. Are you guys okay when if somebody has not got the right part and it's not doing well, do you you know, are you open to change and uh, and a little bit of friendly negotiation? <laughs> okay. Well the drums yeah. are always too loud, so everything's always, <laughs> always, <laughs> always, always, always my fault. It's always my fault. <laughs> yeah, no, Blame really, the drummer. Okay. The songs just start with the acoustic idea and then get the structure and then Johnny he freelances comes up with you know he just comes up with his parts and okay. whatever he comes up with his so you find a balance with the three guitars now Russell when you're looking at three guitars out front is there any room left for you there is okay there and is. how so how do you approach you know coming up with your uh, you know with, with all your riffs well I, I just you know I, I try and put a unique touch to it that it certainly adds to it I don't overplay but I don't underplay yeah. so whatever Amen. seems to work Amen. You know, it's the greatest thing with, with bassists, and again, I speak from experience, and I agree with you so much. 
with bassists, so many are guilty of ba- playing lead bass. Correct. Absolutely. You know? And I've played in, in, in my share of 50s bands and things, and sometimes in the old arse will say, now look, don't play lead bass. And what they're, what they're saying is don't be too noty. You play what we would call jukebox bass, but basically it's a bass that, you know, that, that just walks in between the lower ranges of the drums, and it allows those guitars and allows those voices to have their space. So bass players, just because you own a Ferrari, you don't drive 180. Okay, right. you drive it effectively and with style. Same thing with playing the bass. So, and that that really comes with years of experience. Obviously, right. you know, Russell and gosh knows you've got both. You know, so. <laughs>